Western Digital My Book Hard Drives, the invention that brought network attached storage to the home of the average consumer. Now anybody can just go to a Best Buy, pick up one of these bad boys for less than $100, and bam, they have their own personal cloud full of their selfies, pictures of their kids, dogs, and cringe memes from 9gag. But what if I told you that your precious data could be wiped remotely from your MyBook and have the admin console locked by hackers. Well, it can. Western Digital has determined that some MyBook Live and MyBook Duo devices are being compromised through exploitation of remote command execution vulnerabilities, the company said in a statement June 24th. In some cases, these compromises have led to a factory reset that appears to erase all of the data on the device. The MyBook Live and MyBook Live Duo devices received its final firmware updates in 2015. We understand that our customers' data is very important. We are actively investing investigating the issue and will provide an updated advisory when we have more information. Now here, they're talking about the drives getting wiped remotely. And that's pretty much what I see every other tech news agency that covered uh, this putting more of a focus on that, right? But it's remote code execution. It might be possible to do things a lot worse than just being able to remotely wipe the drives. Yeah, deleting people's backups, that's a pretty big deal. But I bet that this could be used as a pivot point to pwn the entire network. I guarantee that most people have at least one legitimate executable file saved to their NAS. So all a hacker would really need to do is replace that with a Trojan made to compromise whatever computer the Trojan is meant to run on. Uh, since this malicious file is on the NAS, it's less likely that it would get caught. It's not like it has to go through the checks that an email system would do on a file or the checks that a browser would do on a file. Uh, you know, these browsers, most of these days, they're pretty good at identifying malware right when it's downloaded. So in this kind of a scenario, it's really just up to the antivirus or the built-in security to the operating system to stop the virus. And you also have to factor in the social engineering aspect because if somebody's antivirus is telling them that some game or whatever the EXE is in this case uh, that they got from their NAS is infected, they're probably just going to ignore that. Like, ha ha, the stupid antivirus thinks among us.exe is sus, add that to the whitelist and bam, your PC is compromised. Uh, so this is also a situation where destruction beyond data, like beyond digital destruction can be done uh, with remote code execution and if you have enough time. So you could do physical damage to the drives themselves by just writing a whole bunch of data to them over and over again, because these are mechanical drives that are in there. Uh, and even if it were solid state drives, obviously flash storage can get weird out too. So maybe one of the black hats who exploited this, they could have mined some Chia on people's drives, right? That might've been pretty funny. Uh, they do make these in up to an eight terabyte capacity. So maybe they could have made a few nickels off of it or you know, however much uh, mining Chia is worth with that kind of drive. And a black hat could also be a massive troll <laughs> if they exploited this. So they could replace the fake homework folder with the real homework folder. So imagine you turn in some work to your professor without double checking it to see what it actually is before you upload. And instead of grading your paper, he asks you for the sauce. So the uh, CVE that is tracking this, it's pretty, pretty severe. It's got a 9.8 critical rating according to NIST. Uh, now, you might be wondering what exactly is Western Digital going to do about this? Uh, and then what can you do to protect yourself from this kind of stuff? So Western Digital, they really aren't going to do much of anything. I mean, we pretty much saw uh, where this is going, where they say that uh, the MyBook Live and MyBook um, Live Duo devices, they received the firmware updates in 2015. Actually, I don't think that that's a quote from Western Digital. But anyway, we can actually see a quote from them on this article that was written on uh, whizcase.com. I'll have a link to it in the description. Um, so this was actually discovered back in 2018. And apparently it's up until now that it wasn't exploited or at least up until now that it wasn't seen exploited in the wild. I'm sure that this was used before today. Because, you know, what are the odds that there was a critical RCE bug out there for a fairly popular NAS that was just exploited until today? Uh, but anyway, 
Uh, here is the response. So from Western Digital, the vulnerability report affects MyBook Live devices originally introduced in the market between 2010 and 2012. These products have been discontinued since 2014 and are no longer covered under our device software support lifecycle. So apparently it's not these uh, particular ones that are vulnerable to this particular CVE. We encourage users who wish to continue operating these legacy products to configure their firewall to prevent remote access to these devices and to take measures to ensure that only trusted devices on the local network have access to the device. Uh, Western Digital takes security of our customers' data very seriously, blah, blah, blah. Now, of course, I would imagine most people that are still using this router probably, uh, not router, this NAS probably didn't do this. Because, uh, of course, you know, we have this little screenshot here at the top of whoever got pwned by this. Um, yeah, I highly doubt that they would have done that since a NAS is one of those things that you don't really think about. You know, it's just there on the network. And as long as it's working, it's whatever. It's just like routers, which is why so many people's routers are also out of date or they're using insecure settings because it's just a thing that's there. They don't ever touch it. They don't ever think about it. Uh, so when it comes to legacy hardware, generally there really isn't that much you can, that a corporation is going to do for you, unless you're an enterprise, right? That's the only way that you're really going to get a company to uh, support your legacy hardware. And generally they're going to charge you out the ass for it anyway, to try and get you to not do that. Like, uh, you know, the company that I work for, we actually tend to charge customers more for older phones than for newer phones. Cause we're like, Hey, stop ordering this phone. It's a pain in the ass to provision it. But yeah, if you're just a small time consumer, then a corporation is just going to tell you to consume new product. Now, my advice first is to be aware. So be aware of the devices that are actually on your network and whether or not they are vulnerable to an attack. So it's really as simple as just logging into the admin console. I mean, she can't now or, or he can't, whoever this is, because it's locked out now. Uh, but yeah, just log into the admin console of the device. Uh, make sure that you're already using the most up-to-date firmware version and then go in to your favorite search engine, copy that firmware version and check and see if it's vulnerable to hacking. You would have probably stumbled upon uh, this article or possibly uh, this article uh, telling you that it is vulnerable and some way that you can still use the device with limited functionality by putting it behind a firewall. And this was written back in 2019 uh, long before this was published and became a wide known issue. Another option is to simply not use NAS software that is proprietary and you have to depend on a corporation to maintain because their attitude towards old hardware is that you should consume new product. Now I'm sure that the hardware of these drives is fine. Maybe it's a little bit slower than the newer drives that you can buy now, uh, but it's just the software that is the problem. So if you were to run FOSS on your NAS, free open source software, you'll be able to get the most out of it, not just as far as longevity and security, but you're also going to get uh, more options with a FOSS NAS software. Uh, it's also not super complicated. Like, you know, most people might think, oh, you know, using free open source, something that's based on Linux, it's gonna be a command line, it's gonna be complicated. No, I mean, look at these GUIs. These are pretty straightforward. In fact, I actually think that they look nicer than uh, whichever one this is. I mean, we saw with, uh, what was it? The stock um, Netgear router firmware versus the advanced tomato firmware. It looks so much nicer and it might be maintained for longer. Or if you wanna go so far as to understand the code yourself, you can patch it and maintain it yourself. Uh, but that's it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and have a great day.